Hi and welcome to 60 Plus Sit Down Comedy. My name is Phil Lowe. Today I'm going to be speaking about mangled uses of the English language. In this piece, learn to speak English better alike. I'm going to be reading from the script, so I hope this works. And when you look at the blog post, you'll be able to see the text underneath the video. Here we go. In my daily travels around Nottingham, I hear common expressions or ways of speaking that I just about understand. Often they make me want to turn to the person speaking and correct them. I'll give you an example. How often do we hear should of, would of and could of on the bus or in the street? I do and it does my head in, metaphorically speaking. Apart from muttering should have under my breath, a bit too loud, I let it go with a shake of my head and a resigned smile. As a comedy writer, I write these things down to use as material, and believe me, there is plenty of material in this subject. Just don't get me started on the overuse of the word like. Here are some of my jottings and my amusingly pedantic interpretations. Where appropriate, R means I and meh refers to the word me. I told you, didn't I? Did I not remark upon this at some specific time during our relationship? We're gonna go shops. We are going to the shops. Presumably they are going to the shops to purchase the missing words are, to and the. That's not a lad. That's naughty. Please do not explore that avenue of devious behaviour. It is not allowed. Shout ma if you want ma. Shouting is probably the last course of discourse if you value your ears in the return volley. But try it anyway with the aid of a megaphone. Are you joking ma? An expression using irony in its most grammatically destitute form, guaranteed to get the grammar police in uproar. Tell you what makes me laugh. Now you will be disappointed if you pause to wait for a funny story from this one. The resultant story from the declaration, tell you what makes me laugh, is usually one of bitterness, spite, unhappiness and woe, i.e. not laughable at all. Dinner? No, we ain't got none, duck. The opening clause dinner, dinner, is clear enough, but then there is reference to small bitey insects that work well in a team, a nun and a duck. Dinner? No, we ain't got none, duck. See what I mean? A confusing combo at the best of times. Literal translation, dinner, no, we don't appear to have any, my dear. And the hidden inference, awfully sorry about this. Explain me. The word thief appears to have struck again. The words it too have presumably been sold on the black market. Alas, Try as I might, I cannot explain how. Some more. There's gonna be six honours in the. Frankly, I despair for all six on them if this is an example of their vocabulary. There's not like me like. I said that to her like. Like me on Facebook like. You know what I mean like. She liked me like, but she don't really like me like. She hates my guts like. She just said like she would like, so she did it like. Now like she's gone and unlike me like. She goes, ah oh, like, don't like you anymore like bitch. So she can like spin on it like. You get my? Like? Uh, not really sweetheart. I was lost like on the first like like. I think there's somewhat going round. 
This is a common expression and it means I am going off sick from work soon. I have pre-warned you. Everyone in the whole world is getting this illness and I predict that I will get it too. The clue is in the words summer going round. It is usually said with a dramatic tone that portends biblical levels of doom. If ya coulda, then ya shoulda, I woulda. If you were able to then, not than, you should have, I personally would have, if I coulda, know what I mean. They said, I got bad grammar, that shit. There's not wrong with her, just cause she'd been in jail. Enough said, the grammar police are on their way. Their food is mint. So, it's actually just a plateful of a hardy perennial. Is that right? My car's better than yawn. Yes, thank you. I've always found cars rather a yawn too. There were some amazing special effects. Amazingly good pretenses and assumptions. This, this film's French, is it? I fought on him a lot. For God's sake, I thought about him, not I fought on him. And a lot is two words, not one. Maybe you were asleep. That's one word, asleep. A sinner down pub, babe. Now this strikes me as a moral judgment regarding the sinners who frequent the local public house. A Victorian notion, if ever there was one. Amazing, too, how such a brief expression can have a much larger meaning socially. A child, the babe, is only alluded to in this expression, not abused as child labour in the pub, heaven forbid. And we have one more. Wanna bet on that? The adjutant verbalising such an aggressive question usually has no intention of actually starting a gambling club, just so you know. They are usually just depressingly low on word stockage. He, this is like a tongue twister, he brought it for me, he gen it me. I bought it home. Now I borrowed him the money back. I give up. I think I were bung, brung up, bung up, brung up, to talk better at English than that like you get me. Like. 